In this tutorial, Internet Access will be added to an NR52840 Feather running CircuitPython by using an ESP32 as a Wi-Fi coprocessor. My videos are fast-paced, but all the code and notes are available on the website, and a link will be placed in the description. This is my fourth CircuitPython tutorial. If you're just getting started, I recommend you watch the previous episodes to learn the basics. This video will cover how to wire an ESP32 to an NRF52840 and then control it via SPI to provide Wi-Fi access. This will be used to return weather and time data from free online APIs. A real-time clock will be set up and initialized using the correct internet time and zone. The display I.O. library introduced in my last video will be explored in more depth including fonts, shapes, and tiles. And Bluetooth Low Energy will be used to afford remote control via a mobile phone. One question you might have is why use an ESP32 as a coprocessor? Both the MicroPython PyBoard D and the CircuitPython PyPortal have chosen the coprocessor approach. The PyBoard D runs a Cortex M7 processor with a separate Murata 1DX module for Wi Fi. The PyPortal runs an ATSAMD processor with a separate ESP32 for Wi Fi. The ESP32 is a powerful board that could run MicroPython by itself, and for many simple projects, this is a valid approach, as I've demonstrated in my six previous MicroPython tutorials. However, the ESP32 can be a bit sluggish due to its underlying RTOS. There are substantial performance gains by decoupling the Wi Fi operations from the MicroPython VM. Also, CircuitPython won't run on the ESP32, and Adafruit doesn't plan on adding support. Since the Pi Portal uses an ESP32, Adafruit provides an ESP32 firmware and a lesson on how to use it, though the instructions are a bit outdated. For example, ESP8266 support has been dropped along with the AT commands. Still, their site contains a link to the most recent firmware, which is currently version 1.3.0. Click the green button to get the firmware. For this video, a Wemo Slowlin ESP32 will be the Wi-Fi coprocessor. A Raspberry Pi running the latest version of Raspbian will be used to program the ESP32 firmware. A micro USB cable connects the ESP32 to the Pi, it provides power, and a serial connection. On the Raspberry Pi, open a terminal. Pseudo pip3 install ESP tool is used to install the ESP tool, which is a utility to program ESP chips. The installation was successful. CD to the downloads folder. Atlas shows the firmware zip file. Unzip extracts the single bin file, Nina W102 version 1.3.0. Dmessage grep TTY USB shows the ESP32 CP210 serial interface is at TTY USB 0. ESP tool double tack port dev TTY USB 0 flash ID detects the ESP32 chip. This indicates the chip is recognized and ready to be programmed. It's recommended to wipe the ESP32 prior to installing the new firmware. This is accomplished by recalling the last ESP tool command and changing flash ID to erase flash. Okay, the chip erase completed successfully. Now the Adafruit firmware can be installed. This time the ESP tool baud rate is set to 115,200. The command is write flash, zero indicates the starting address, and the firmware file name is specified. I'll speed up the video. The write is complete and verified. A serial console can be used to test the ESP32. I'll use Minicom, which is installed using sudo apt get install Minicom. After the install completes, type Minicom tack d dev tty usb 0 tack b 115200. The console is now connected to the ESP32. I'll press the reset button on the board. The console shows the boot sequence, which means everything's working. The ESP32 can now be unplugged from the Raspberry Pi. A Feather NRF52840 Express will run CircuitPython and an older Wemos Lowland ESP32 will act as the coprocessor. However, any generic ESP32 will work and they can now be purchased for under $5 on eBay. The communication protocol is SPI, which uses four lines, MOSI, MISO, CLOCK, and CHIP SELECT. Two additional lines will be used to indicate busy or ready and to enable reset. A ground on the NRF52840 is connected to a ground on the ESP32. The MI or MISO pin on the NRF52840 is connected to GPIO23. MO, MOSI, is connected to GPIO14. SCK, serial clock, is connected to GPIO18. GPIO10 is connected to GPIO5 for chip select. GPIO11 is connected to GPIO33 for busy ready. GPIO12 is connected to EN, which is short for enable. This allows for resets. Finally, the NR52840 USB pin is connected to 5 volts on the ESP32. This provides 5 volt power to the ESP32 from the USB bus. I've added the NRF52840 Feather to the breadboard with the ESP32. 
I've connected a ground from each board to a ground rail. GPIO 23 on the ESP32 is connected to MI, MISO, on the feather. GPIO 14 is connected to MO, MOSI. GPIO 18 is connected to SEK, serial clock. GPIO 5, chip select, is connected to GPIO 10. GPIO 33, busy ready, is connected to GPIO 11. EN, enable, is connected to GPIO 12. The ESP32 5 volt pin is connected to the USB pin on the NRF52840. That's it for the wiring. Next, a micro USB cable is used to plug the NRF52840 into the Raspberry Pi. This provides 5 volt power, serial communication, and the board's flash storage will appear as a USB flash drive. The MU ID will be used to write the first test program. Import board for the board definitions. From digital I.O., import digital in out to define the GPIO pins. The Adafruit ESP32 spy library is imported. This handles communication with the ESP32. And from the same library, Wi-Fi Manager is imported. As the name implies, it manages the Wi-Fi connection. Both of these libraries are provided in the Adafruit CircuitPython bundle, which I already downloaded to the downloads folder on the Pi. Navigate to the bundle lib folder and select Adafruit ESP32 spy. The Adafruit bus device library is a dependency, so it's required too. Copy the folders, open the CircuitPython folder on the feather, and paste in the libraries. It's recommended not to store your SSID and password in your main program for security reasons, therefore a separate secrets file is imported. I'll go ahead and create it now. The dictionary called secrets has keys for SSID and password. I'll fill them in off camera. If you're using version control such as GitHub, make sure you add the file to the ignore list so it doesn't get publicly posted. Click save and the file's name secrets.py. The variable spy is set to the feather spy interface. CS is set to GPIO 10, ready is set to GPIO 11, and reset is set to GPIO 12. The ESP spy control is instantiated and passed the spy bus, CS, ready, and reset. The Wi-Fi manager is instantiated and passed the ESP, the secrets dict, and the third parameter is an optional status LED, which I'll skip by specifying none. The Wi-Fi get method is used to request the time data for Tokyo from the Free World Time API. The results will be printed to the REPL in JSON format. Click Serial so the output will be visible. Click Save, and the program is called code.py so it runs automatically. The program runs, and the results are displayed. Looks like it's currently 2 in the morning in Japan. Notice that the Wi-Fi manager did all the heavy lifting transparently. It took care of connecting to the Wi-Fi network, sending the request, and returning the response. Next, I'll create a Bluetooth-controlled clock that displays time and weather from around the world. An ST7735 color LCD display will be used for the clock display. The ST7735 ground pin and backlight cathode are grounded. The VCC and backlight anode are connected to 3.3 volts. The SCL clock pin is daisy-chained to the existing clock line between the Feather and the ESP32. One of the advantages of the SPI protocol is that multiple SPI devices can share the same bus, which saves GPIO pins. The SDA pin is connected to the master out. The display is write-only, so master in is not required. GPIO 5 is used for reset. GPIO 6 is used for AO, which toggles between data and command mode. GPIO 9 is used for CS. Each spy device does need its own chip select pin, which informs the slave device it's being addressed. On the breadboard, I added the ST7735 LCD. I've already connected ground and VCC to their respective rails, along with the backlight anode and cathode. The display's reset pin is connected to the feather's GPIO 5. AO is connected to GPIO 6. I'll disconnect the dark blue data line from the feather's MOSI and plug it into SDA on the LCD. Then patch SDA back to the MOSI with another jumper wire. This connects the data lines from both the display and the ESP32 to the Feather's MOSI. The same goes for the clock. Disconnect the light blue clock line from the Feather serial clock and connect it to SCL on the LCD. Another jumper wire reconnects both clock lines to the Feather. The LCD's chip select is connected to GPIO 9. Finally, 3.3 volt power is applied to the rails from the Feather. The display lights up, which is a good sign. For the record, it'd be more prudent to disconnect the USB power before wiring. The clock will require several additional libraries. I'll open two instances of the file manager. The second is the CircuitPython drive. In the left pane, navigate to the CircuitPython bundle and open the lib folder. Bitmap font is required and BLE. Also display shapes and text. I'll drag the four folders to copy them to the feather. Next, the ST7735 display library used in my previous video is dragged to the feather. 
a bitmap font called load is dragged to the feather. It's in BDF format. Finally, a bitmap of weather condition icons is copied to the feather. That takes care of all the necessary files. The new program needs to import several libraries. ST7735R targets the LCD display. Display.io will be used to write graphics and text to the display. Bitmap fonts supports BDF fonts. Label is imported from the display text to create text labels. Round rec is imported from display shapes to draw rounded rectangles. Font and terminal are imported from terminal I.O. to create a multi-line text terminal. UART server is imported to handle Bluetooth communication. RTC is imported to enable a real-time clock. Local time is imported from time to read the time from the clock. I created a separate library called weather to get and process the time and weather API data. The ESP and Wi-Fi code remains the same, but lose the print statement for the Tokyo example. A real-time clock is instantiated. A BLE UART server is instantiated, and advertising started. Display.io release displays frees up the display resources. The LCD CS is set to GPIO 9. DC is set to GPIO 6. Reset is set to GPIO 5. The display bus is defined using Display.io 4 wire and pass the SPI bus along with the GPIO pins for DC, CS, and Reset. An ST7735 display is defined, past the bus, and the LCD dimensions in pixels. A Display.io group called Splash is created. Max size indicates the maximum elements allowed in the group. Show is used to display the Splash group. Next, the background color set. Background bitmap is set to a new bitmap with dimensions equal to the display and it only be one color. A two color palette is defined. The first color is set to yellow and the second to black. The second color is added because the palette will be reused later. A tile grid will hold the bitmap, which is aligned at XY coordinates 0, 0. The pixel shader is set to the palette. This creates a single yellow tile the size of the display. Splash a pen sets the LCD display background to yellow. Next, a custom font is loaded from flash storage. BDF is a very archaic bitmap font format, but since it came out in the 80s, there's a lot of free fonts available. Load Glyphs is called to preload all the characters the clock is going to use. This helps improve performance, which can be quite slow with respect to custom fonts. The slash XB0 at the end of the string is for the degrees symbol. The label will hold the city name. The load font is specified. Mask Glyphs indicates the maximum number of characters. This is necessary if you don't specify any initial text. X and Y positions are 8 and 6. The text color is set to red. Splash a pen adds the city label to the display group. A rounded rectangle will surround the clock time and date. It's drawn from coordinates 0, 15 to 128,25. The corner radius is 10. The background fill is black. The outline is green. The outline stroke is 3. Splash a pen adds the rectangle to the group. Another label will display the clock time and date. The load font is specified. The maximum characters is 14. X and Y are 8 and 27. The color is white. A multi-line terminal will hold weather data. W and H store the character width and height, which are retrieved using font get bounding box. A condition tile grid is defined. Font bitmap is not the load font. It's the default terminal font that was imported with terminal I.O. Pixel shader is set to the same palette used for the LCD background, which will be black text on a yellow background. XY is 6, 40. The terminal will be 17 characters wide and 5 lines high. Tile width and height are set to the character's height and width. The terminal is defined using the tile grid and the default terminal font. Splash a pen adds it to the group. Terminal right displays the initial Bluetooth status, slash R slash N are the line breaks. A third label will hold temperature and humidity values. The text color is blue and it's added to the group. An icons bitmap is loaded from the feathers flash. It contains icons for the different weather conditions. A variable BMP will hold the icons and is set using display.io on disk bitmap. A tile grid called icons is defined and passed BMP. The pixel shader is set to color convert, which will just translate the bitmap colors. The default tile is set to the last tile, which is the CircuitPython logo. XY is 77, 110. Width and height are set to 1, which will only show one tile at a time. Each icon tile is 50 pixels wide and high. Splash append adds the icon. A flag called clock ready will track if the real-time clock has been set. Initially it'll be false. 
A while loop will pause the program until a Bluetooth client connects. Another while is the main program loop, and it will continue to run as long as the client stays connected. The UART in waiting method checks to see if any Bluetooth data has been received. The program expects the client to transmit a city name, which determines what time and weather to display. Read gets the name, decode converts the binary data to text, R strip removes any trailing white space, and upper converts to uppercase. The city name transmitted by the client is checked against the weather library to confirm it's a valid name. If so, the display data is cleared. The city label is cleared, clock label is cleared, the clock ready flag is set to false, a variable called previous second is set to zero. It will determine if the clock time needs to be updated. The temperature label is cleared, the icon is set to the CircuitPython logo, the terminal is cleared, and updated to please wait, and the city name is displayed. The weather library exposes a method called getWeatherConditions. It's passed the city name and the Wi Fi interface. It returns time and weather data from two free online APIs. I'm not going to go over the code for the weather library because it just uses the Wi Fi get command that I demonstrated earlier. There's error checking, the times are adjusted for the time zones, and the data is cleaned up and parsed. The code is just basic Python, and it's very specific to the World Time API and the FCC Weather API. However, all the code will be posted on my website, along with a write-up. The real-time clock date and time are set using the data returned from the online API. Once set, the real-time clock will keep the time, which is retrieved using the local time method. The clock label on the display is formatted to the current time, hours, minutes, seconds, month, and day. The clock ready flag is set to true. Terminal right displays the weather condition, the sunset and sunrise times, and the wind speed in kilometers per hour. Again, this is all collected from the API data. The length of the weather condition is checked to see if it's longer than one line. If not, a line feed is sent to the terminal to top justify the display. The temperature label displays the formatted temperature and humidity returned from the weather API. The FCC weather API returns a hyperlink to a weather icon. Unfortunately, the icon is ping format, which isn't supported yet by CircuitPython. I tried to write a ping decoder, but gave up when I realized that CircuitPython doesn't support Zlib compression yet, at least not on the NRF52840. So instead, my weather library returns a frame index based on the returned icon. The icon tile grid is set to the specified frame, which displays the corresponding weather condition icon on the LCD. If the city name is not supported by the weather library, then UartWrite is used to return a city not found message to the Bluetooth client. If there's no data in the Bluetooth buffer and the clock is ready, then time and data are retrieved from the real time clock using the local time method. If the current time second doesn't equal the stored previous second value, then the clock needs to be updated. Previous second is updated, then the clock label is set to the current time and date, formatted as hours, minutes, seconds, month, and day. Okay, that completes the code. Click Save. Looks like there's a problem. I forgot to append the clock label to the display group. This wouldn't throw an error, but the time and date would never get displayed. The LCD display looks good and is awaiting a Bluetooth command. I have the free Nordic NRF Connect app running on my phone. I'll connect to Circu, which is the feather board. Expand the Nordic UART service. TX is for receiving data. We want RX, which lets us send. I'll click the upload icon, which prompts for data. I'll use the mic on the phone. Katmandu. Press done and send. The LCD displays Katmandu and a please wait message while it retrieves the time and weather data from the online APIs. The first time will be slower because the Wi-Fi manager needs to connect. It should keep the connection open for future queries. Okay, it's 11.10, a few clouds, sunsets at 18.30, sunrise at 5.30, wind is 5.4 kph, it's 21 degrees Celsius, with 52% humidity. Let's try again. Reykjavik. The city name is updated. That was faster. Looks like rain. The sun will be rising in 13 minutes, a bit windy and cold. Singapore. Thunderstorms, but it's warm, 30.3 degrees. How about Antarctica? McMurdo. Overcast clouds, only four hours of daylight today, windy and cold. I hope you found this video interesting. You can support this channel by subscribing, leaving a like, and sharing. Thanks for watching.